Hey everyone, it's Unishek here and welcome to our latest Forge video. Today we're going to be going over some of the scripting aspects of Forge in Halo Infinite. And with me, I've got two members of the team, Michael, Connor. How's it going, guys? It's hey, going good. It going? Happy wanna... to be here again. Yeah, thank you for joining. <laughs> yeah. uh, you want to tell us a little bit about who you are and what you do on the team? Sure. Uh, I'm Michael Shore. I'm the Forge lead designer here at 343. And I do a lot of things, but basically I help Shepard forge design uh, to implementation. And my name is Connor Canelli. I am a technical designer here on Forge, and I spend a lot of time on our visual scripting system, NodeGraph, which is what we're showing off today. Yeah, this one I'm extremely excited about. I know you are too, Connor. Yeah. Uh, and we've got a wonderful map uh, that we want to take a look at that you've built some scripting on top of. Yeah. Uh, and, and this is a community members map in our private flight, which is a uh, certified champ, correct? That's right. Yep, I did not build this map. I just strapped some scripts in here. So everything you see here today uh, is all his work. Really cool stuff. I'll do a quick lap and then we'll get right into the scripting. So yeah, oh, see my lighting flip over. I haven't built it yet. Yeah. And for anyone who doesn't know, what is scripting at a high level? Scripting is a way to get logic to run in your game. And in Halo 5 and Halo 2 Anniversary, you could add scripts to objects. So you had a little menu, you could set up conditions and triggers. So, you know, like when a player died, do something. Um, in Halo Infinite, we're focused on offering visual scripting, which is a much more accessible way to run your game mode logic. And I've got a quick demo of that here. We're in edit mode here in Forge, uh, and I'm going to go into play mode, which is how we run scripts. You might be familiar with test mode, and that's just my typical drop out of monitor mode, jump around the map, try out your clamors, those types of things. In test mode, that's where your scripts will actually run. And then, mm -hmm. of course, when you leave test mode, we tear down everything so you're working with a clean slate. And I just hold the button to do that, and you'll see I'll spawn at a spawn point the little brain, which is where the script hides there. And, uh, you know, looks like I'm playing the game now. Yeah. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to throw a grenade. And when I throw a grenade in the normal game, nothing happens. But you'll notice I've got a little message here. I'll look at a wall so you got some good contrast. Current objective, survive. Oh, that's uh, weird. How's that happening? Nice throwback. That's yeah. nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I played Halo Reach. Yeah. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go click into this script brain. I'm going to go to our node graph menu. And this and is going to be people's first look at node graph. Yeah, and I, yeah. I see a couple nodes here in the scene. Yeah. So this is our visual scripting system, and uh, this is the script that just ran. We're going to break down everything that just happened to make this thing show up on the screen, and we just want to show you how easy it is to get started with node graph and to get your own game mode scripts. So everything in node graph starts with an event. Uh, events are gameplay, well, events, things that happen uh, that you can hook up scripts to. So I'm going to go clear these strings out of the way here. Uh, and we're going to look at the event we're using here is on grenade throw. This is an event node, and there's a couple of components. You got the name, and you got some pins on the side. This diamond is the action pin. This is what's going to let you hook up what runs next. So if we want to print a message to the screen, I'm going to take that diamond, and I'm going to go hook it up to the next diamond that I want to run. If I wanted to put more stuff after I print messages to the screen, I could just keep using the diamonds and chain mm -hmm. them all together. Work it's really like a well. flow chart. That's exactly right. Of, of just game logic. Yep. And you're starting it with on grenade throw. You now want something to pop up on your exactly. UI. Exactly. And, okay. and we have lots of options. I'm going to open up the node browser, which lets us put nodes in the scene. And you can see we've got a couple different events. The player events lets us check out when somebody crouches, when someone marks with the ping system. That one's really, really fun. When they spawn, when they te change teams. Uh, we've got stuff with weapons and grenades. There's a whole bunch in here. Uh, and I'm really excited about everything you can do. So. The other thing I wanted to show you is these pins, which provide a little bit of data. In the case of the grenade throw event, we it tells us who threw the grenade and what type of grenade they threw. And then you can do some if statements and mm -hmm. decide, oh, maybe if it's, I only want this to run when they throw a plasma grenade. But in this case, we just want to show whoever threw this grenade the message. Mm -hmm. And if I go look at the node we connected it to, this splash message node, uh, it's got a couple inputs. These are pins as well. So we got a player node, and I'm going to hook those up. So I'm going to click the button, drag the string over, Hook it up just like that. And now whoever throw the grenade is the one who's going to see the message. Nice. We've already set the duration. You can edit these directly on the node. So we set about seven seconds. Uh, and then this takes a message as well. And this comes from this last node over here, uh, which is a messaging node. And what I love about this is we've got these message templates yeah. uh, that lets you print different things to the screen. So I'm going to try a, another little fun exercise here. We see current objective, and then it takes that string one. And if you look down at the node, I'll zoom in. We've got survive. So that's why you saw the message show up, current objective survive. Nice. We'll uh, 
So you well, can write custom messages to people that's right. if you wanted to. Mm -hmm. And these messages, <laughs> that's exactly right. And these messages are localized too. So they're in all the different languages. So when mm -hmm. someone else uh, who, I don't know, maybe speaks German, plays your game that you wrote in English, uh, yeah. they can read it too. So I'm going to go grab these strings I already grabbed. And you don't have to do any of that localization work. No, no it's that's automatic. Right. No, it's yeah. behind the scenes. Yeah, yeah. Oh, for sure. So I'm going to go drop these over. Hello world. And uh, we'll go back into play mode. We'll throw our grenade, and I'll face over here. Wow. We just wrote our first script. That is so cool. So that's how easy it is to get started. Uh, take an event, hook it up to some actions, and then provide the data the actions need to run, and you can do a lot of fun stuff. So I got another demo here. Uh, uh, oh, so that's yeah, just going to be super useful for you're making your mode, and you want to tell players what to do, right? All the time. Yes. Just uh, like our current modes that's right. that we make yep. in-house. You might, you might recognize that uh, current objectives survive from last part and standing. It's hooked mm -hmm. up to the same MP systems. With this visual scripting system, every chance we get, we want to take something that we use for our modes and make it available to the players. The closer we can get you to the metal, the better. So, um, awesome. You'll also be able to use the kill feed to put strings oh, as wow. well. On the bottom left there. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Really handy for debugging. So I'm going to go delete these nodes, and we're going to make a, a new one really quick. I'm going to actually go put that uh, grenade throw back because that's pretty handy. We can kind of see when it happens. And let's go give ourselves a weapon. I always like getting rocket launchers. So let's Who doesn't? go into our inventory, which <laughs> is where free. Our... Yeah, yeah. For, I'll trade a grenade for a rocket. Sure. Why not? Uh, that'll give us our give player new weapon node. And you can see we had a ton in there that helps deal with weapons and ammo. And there's a whole other category for grenades and equipment. We want to give you access to as many systems as we can. So I'm going to hook up those diamonds. So we go on grenade throw to give player new weapon. The person I want to give it to is the player who threw the grenade, and then I can fill in some details here. So let's go get the weapon type. I've got the list of all the weapons in the game here. Uh, I really like that red energy sword, so I'm going to do that. All right. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I did say rockets. Well, uh, no, we'll no, come, let's we'll go energy back. sword. We'll come back. Yeah, yeah. Blood blade is, is uh, the way to it's go. It's a pretty, it's yeah. pretty awesome. This one, yeah. 100%. This next pin is the uh, weapon addition method, so it's going to tell us, hey, uh, how do we want to give the player the weapon? I'll say replace all, so we get rid of your current weapons, and just, hey, you're a guy with a sword now. And then this asks, do I want to wait to run the next node before uh, moving on? And that's not really relevant because we're just doing one node yeah, here. Yeah. So I got all the data I need. I'm going to back out and head into play mode. I'm going to throw that grenade. Boom, there we go. Mm -hmm. And it Red just sword. automatically equips the sword, drops your assault rifle. That's right. For you. Wow. So that's how easy to get started. So if I go back into the script brain, uh, one thing that you could do in Halo 5 is you could combine weapons with the weapon pad glitch. Uh, uh, in Halo 5 yeah. Forge, we, we had this UI bug where you could pick the like rec variant and copy it or and apply it to weapons that it really shouldn't be on. And we thought that was really, really cool. So we thought we'd bring it back in a fun way. So I'll go down into the variables, grab this weapon type combination node, and then I can mix and match weapons. So let's go get, I did want that so rocket launcher. So fully supported weapon combination. That's Officially. right. Officially. Yes. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> that's awesome. It was a no brainer to yeah. say we need to keep this bug around. Oh, yeah. It was like, make that a thing. So yeah. I'm going to. I remember that the day that video went live yeah. and we saw it all back in Halo 5, everyone was like, we got to keep this around. Yep. So it's cool to see it. And you'll be able supported. to apply these to loadouts, uh, give them to weapons, or give them to players on the fly. Uh, it's really, really flexible. You just come up to those gameplay events. So, so explain the base weapon and the configuration, what that means. Yeah, so the base weapon is going to be our standard weapons uh, that you see all around our arena maps. And they essentially provide the frame, the gun you're holding, uh, and how, like, how fast it shoots and how much ammo it has. But the configuration is essentially the... Uh, legendary variants, the ones you see in campaign. Mm. And these are the ones that can override the properties of the base weapon. And what we've letting you do here is override them in ways that maybe we didn't originally intend. So in this case, I've got an assault rifle. It's going to look like an assault rifle, but I'm going to override those bullets with the rocket launcher. Mm. And we'll get a weapon of mass destruction here pretty quick. So then I'm going to go take that weapon type, and you can see I've already connected it to that output pin. Yep. Let's go test it. Easy as pie. Throw a grenade. New rocket, but look it down in the weapon cradle in the bottom right. I got this. Oh, uh, yeah. oh you can no. see the rockets are blowing off each other. <laughs> I was going to say, some of, some of those are going to come back Ooh, at you. Almost done. All right. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We're doing live demos. Live. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. So, I'm going to get rid of this one, but that, yeah. like, the high level here is it's really easy. You can hook this up to every time a player crouches, they get one of these, and we've got loads of actions. That's and I want to show important. you a little more complicated version mm -hmm. of this here quick, but, uh, like, 
that's the thing I want you to walk away from. It's really easy to get started with Node Graph, and you can drop them into any map. Like, I didn't make this map. I just grabbed someone else's and started mm. putting stuff in. I and can't wait to see what happens with Super Fiesta and those weapon yeah. combos. It's going it's to be insane. I was just going to ask, like, visual scripting, brand new for Infinite, right? Mm -hmm. We wanted this because Halo 5, we started the toy with scripting a bit, and people wanted it more accessible, more intuitive uh, to dive in, and we, we now have that. Yeah, yep. yeah. Yeah, yeah, scripting in Halo 5 was, it was a challenge, right? It was a little obtuse. It was still very powerful. So but, it's incredible uh, minigames. Um, yeah, I mean, the stuff that people did was incredible. But, you know, this just builds upon that and makes it easier to to sort of intuitively sort of understand what's going on, debug, and get the results that you want. Yep. And speaking of debugging, uh, a nice part about these script brains is you don't have to put all your scripts in one brain. And so the other more advanced demo I wanted to give is I used to play this custom game in Halo 3. Uh, it was based off Juggernaut, and you know Juggernaut's not in Halo Infinite, but that doesn't mean I don't still want to play it. Yeah. Uh, we called it Doom Fruit uh, because we were <laughs> goofballs at the time, and you know, it didn't really mean anything. But uh, we'll dive into the name another time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It just, it just came with it, and uh, and so basically you had the the Juggernaut. Uh, when you killed him, you became the Juggernaut, and you were uh, a little bit faster, really, really tanky. And I was like, that would be really cool to have here. So I built a couple script brains. I, I did about four here that gives a base juggernaut mode and then applies the specific settings that I used to use in my old custom game here. So uh, I've got this one here. I'll just give you a quick overview. This one handles the juggernaut setup, everything that uh, everything that's going to like make the player the juggernaut. And we'll walk through one of these chains, show you what's going on. This one handles uh, what happens when someone dies. You can mm -hmm. see we've got some more complicated branching logic going on here. So you can use if statements, for loops, those types of things. And then when we don't have a juggernaut because somebody quit the game and we don't know what's happening next, this is some error handling that backs it up. You have to choose the next juggernaut. That's right. Yep. And this isn't maybe 100% of juggernaut. There's probably a little bit more polish I could add to this, but I put this together in probably about six hours or so, like just kind of thinking, how do I want to do this? And uh, got it all there. And then this last script brain is variables, which are going to let us tune it so I can tune stuff such as uh, you know, who, uh, who is the Juggernaut? What's the name? Uh, there's that Doom Fruit word. So when you see that show up, I just want to tell you <laughs> why you're going to see that. But I can make that any one of our localized strings. So that could be Juggernaut. So you you put Doom Fruit in our game? That's right. Just because you wanted it? That's correct. <laughs> <laughs> we, okay. We're clearly legal. We're good. We're good. Uh, and we and how many points you get for... Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you get uh, how many points you kill get for killing the Juggernaut, how many points you get for kills as the Juggernaut. And you can see I'm actually naming my variables based on the names here. So this is really, really powerful. Mm -hmm. And uh, we've also got the traits that define the players. You might recognize these from custom games, but we can change exactly how much move speed bonus the player is going to get. Do they have extra bonus shields? So they'll be more tanky. How slow does their health recharge? Mm -hmm. Can you go back to variables really quickly? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Just I wanted to speak a little bit about the scope there because oh, I think yeah. it's a really like since you're using multiple script brains, like yep. why is why are they set to global and why is that so important? Yeah, so uh, in lots of our scripts or lots of minigame scripts, you end up using the same piece of information over and over again. So say in Halo 5, you wanted to do one of these modes and every time you killed a certain guy, you got five points. Each one of those scripts you had to put in five points for. Uh, mm -hmm. There was a variable system there too, but we wanted to make that super accessible. And so we offer this option here to choose local, global, or obje object scope. Local keep everything in the same script brain. And so if you're mm -hmm. making uh, simple scripts, you want to use local, it's nice and simple. But if you want your variables accessible in other locations, we've got global, which means you can see it in every uh, every uh, context, essentially every other script brain. And object lets you actually store a number on a thing, like a player. So I could say, like, track someone's coins. Mm -hmm. If I was building, like, a Halo RPG from the MCC custom browser, I did mm -hmm. a lot of phishing in that a couple months ago, and I was like, <laughs> that's pretty cool. Uh, the object, you could say, I'm going to put a coins variable on a player, and then whatever action you take in the game give you coins, mm -hmm. uh, we can just track that. So then awesome. your scripts can just grab it based on you know who's interacting with the switch. Wow. So really, really powerful constructs yeah. and make it a lot easier to manage stuff. So um, I'm going to dive into one of these, and then we'll show you the game mode, because I think that'll be, hey, this is cool. Yeah, uh, yeah. But I want to take just walk you all through what happens in this custom event, which is when we set up the juggernaut. Mm -hmm. um, quick thing, the custom event is we've got all those gameplay events that the game raises. Sometimes you have custom logic that you're like, hey, when certain things happen, when like multiple factors are are happening, I want to trigger my own logic and custom events let us do that. So they're up here in events custom and you can do both local and global versions of those. 
Uh, so this is a global one because it gets triggered from a couple script brains, but there's lots of things that trigger a new juggernaut, start of the match, when someone dies, when someone quits. So we put all the logic in one of these here. And when that goes off, we go and apply a trait set. Those are those custom game properties I was started to show you earlier. This is making the juggernaut the juggernaut. Mm -hmm. Yep, I'll go back sure. into the variables. And we define those up here. Uh, movement speed, bonus shields, health recharge, stopping people from throwing grenades, so the juggernaut has to use the hammer whether or not they drop weapons, which is really big for custom games, mm -hmm. whether or not they can pick up weapons, and do they have infinite ammo? We don't know our Juggernaut to run out of hammers. But I can put as many of these in here as I want and name it all as a set. This is the Juggernaut set. And so this uh, this guy right here just says, hey, I'll when you become the, the juggernaut, juggernaut, make him the Juggernaut until he dies. And you can apply that for a certain number of seconds or just permanently, and they'll get it every respawn. So lots of different ways. So you took a different script brain, plugged it into this one, and plugged it into that flow. That's right. Nice. Uh, we've got give player new weapon, which we saw in our last demo. So that just hands a player a new weapon. Uh, I'm using a global variable here so that in the variables, you can say, hey, I want you to get the big red hammer from campaign. Maybe I want juggernauts with rocket launchers. Uh, mm -hmm. So I can just go change it in the variables, and it'll show up any spot that it gets used here. I'm just following this little diamond pin down here, pushing splash to players. You also saw this in our demo. So we go and make the message. We're going to say, you are the string. And then we're going to use that global variable for the juggernaut name. So once again, really, really tunable. So when you drop this on your map, if you're like, Doomfruit's kind of silly, I want classic, great. You could swap that out. <laughs> but you, you could say you are the Doomfruit. That is correct. Yes. And in fact, so, I hope we see that here. Do. That's what I hope <laughs> we see here really quick. And then finally, we trigger some more logic, which is down here at the bottom of the page. But we have nav markers that'll kind of track the juggernaut and move around. You'll see that in the custom. But that happens down here. And we won't go through all the details, but you can configure to have markers, make them follow players. Mm -hmm. And so the takeaway from all that is there's tons of things you can do in this. This node browser is absolutely massive. Each of these are categories, and each of these categories is stocked with tons and tons of nodes. So I'm really excited for the community to get their hands on all the things and then start giving us ideas on what we should add in the future, because I think that'll also be really, really exciting. Yeah. That is very so, cool. I'm going to queue up our, our Juggernaut custom game so we can put your script to the test here. Yes, let's see on how that goes. Other machine. Uh, but you, you used to do scripting as a community member too, correct? Yeah, I spent way too many hours in Halo 5 making mini games, uh, little objects that you could play with. Um, learned a lot of things about special numbers. Uh, there's a lot of crazy math that happens in Halo 5 and some cool tricks to get stuff to follow. So yeah, I love all the things that you could do. Um, and I'm, it's really cool to be a part of the expansion of that for infinite yeah and making a little juggernaut demo we can test here too as yeah. i uh jump in i'm the only the the account we're playing on is my bumper jumper account so i kind of have to be but i'm yeah, gonna watch I can't, I can't play that <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna watch as uh some bots kill each other and uh there we go we've got a juggernaut who got that first kill correct yep. so i'm gonna try and go knock out this juggernaut who as we can tell has uh eshram's hammer and i am way too close so i'm gonna run away Please don't chase me. Don't look and, at me. Uh, I'm you'll trying notice to go you didn't get any kills because in the game mode we set it to oh, no zero points. Kills. Yeah, yeah. So we're only getting points for killing the juggernaut or kills as the juggernaut. Oh no. Which is really important for making those custom oh, games no. sing. So remember, he's tanky. Oh no. Get out of there. There we go. There we go. Get the kill. Nice. All right. Nice. And there's our splash nice. message. You yeah. are the Doom Fruit. I am the Doom Fruit. Now Let's you're go. a little faster. Your shields are recharged. And I've got the HUD on me. Yep, the yep. nav marker on me. And I can come after some. Oh. I went a little too far there. Moving too fast. Come back. So this bot. game will go to 25 no. and end. And this is just our arena FFA Slayer game. And all we did was change how many bots are present and uh, set the points to zero so that the mini game scripts we put in those script brains can control what's happening. I'm going to try and get there. Oh, I think that I think that might be too late. Oh, no, I got it. Go. Oh, there go. you go. There you go. Come back to the gameplay. You're on my radar. Come back. I think we might have to turn oh, on this. Oh, it timed so out. Close. Oh, close, close, close. So, we might have to turn those bots up to ODST next time you play, but yeah. uh, I, I think this highlights one of the things I really like about Infinite's Forge is you can uh, test your mini games with bots, mm. and that is so, like in in Halo Five you had to go find a <laughs> <laughs> quality move, uh, quality emergent move. gameplay right there. Yep. Love yeah. it. I saw it, lined it up, and it worked. Oh, that's always so much fun. So I remember in Halo Five I was constantly like bothering friends to come join my game so I could hit them with the gravity hammer and make sure my minigame was working. And mm -hmm. uh, something I really enjoy about uh, testing in Infinite is we've got bots. 
uh, which lets it easy to get a first pass on a couple of these things. Just taking a look at the map now, too. Yeah, testing bots, testing maps and experiences with bots is, is yeah. I feel like it's such a game changer for Forge. And uh, I know I would love to finish this game uh, and keep it going, but we do want to show off how these bots know to navigate around on these maps, right? Yeah. So we've got another uh, map loaded up here on the side, which is by Cliff internally, who we had on uh, in the episode before, he put together a map that covers what it looks like with the bot nav mesh, right? That mm -hmm. instructs bots on what to do on these maps. Yeah. You guys mind walking us through that? Yeah, definitely. So uh, if you've never heard the term before, nav mesh is essentially this data that comes with a map that tells a bot how to navigate it. And uh, in Halo Infinite, we generate that automatically for you. Uh, and you can actually see that with one of our tool settings. Uh, if I go into the tool settings over here and go down to nav mesh and turn that on, if I point my camera, I can see, wow, <laughs> blue is anywhere there's nav mesh. And you can see all these arrows that are saying, hey, here's how one of our multiplayer bots will navigate, like read the space and say, oh, I can jump from there to there. I can jump down from those bridges. I can jump across. Uh, and that's really, really cool. Now, no automation is perfect, though. Uh, so like oftentimes you'll make some geo. It's a little strange. I think Cliff pointed out one. Let's see if I can find it. There's a ledge back here. Yes. Yep. Uh, and you can see, actually, I don't have the uh, nav mesh on it. Uh, I think I got an old copy of the map. It did not auto generate. Yeah. Uh, and so, right, we've got that means it's basically invisible to the bots. They don't know that they can go up there. So, how do you solve that problem? I'll come out here to spawn some objects. I'm going to turn this off just so we can see it. Uh, in the gameplay section, you can check out our nav mesh category. And we actually have a bunch of different objects that let us tell bots how to read the map. Mm -hmm. You can tell them about crouch areas, like a little, little tunnel in Bazaar. You can talk about jump hints, uh, say, hey, this is a place you can jump if the those arrows aren't generating automatically. You can say, actually, you really can do this. Um, we've got some one-way movements, so things like uh, teleporters or man cannons. Uh, and you can also say, hey, I actually really want you to uh, do some stuff here. So the way I would generate for that map, we won't show it here on, on stream because we don't want you to have to sit through a build. but. Uh, I would just basically go intersect that with the area. Whoops. And uh, next time this generates, now the automation will say, oh, great, you want this ledge? Let me take care of that for you. And it'll take care, uh, it'll go generate it. So and you can suggest to Forge, I want this to be a playable space. That's for right. Yep. Nice. And yeah. these are a lot of the same markup we use in our internal editor, and we've just put them in Forge so that you can use them too. Yeah, and a lot of this is directly from the internal t tools. Yeah. And then just to call it out there, if you don't want bots to go to an area, you can apply nav mesh cutters that say, no, 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 do not generate nav mesh there. And then the bots will say, great, I don't see it. Do not Which jump nice. into the pit of death. Correct. Yeah, yeah. yeah. A very good example. <laughs> yeah, that's very right. Good example. So, um, one thing, uh, bots, how do they know how to pick up weapons? That's actually built into the objects themselves. So, okay. any kind of weapon racks, um, uh, objectives like the flags they've actually they already know how to play those modes from our regular maps and that carries over to forge so when you put them down it'll go into their utility tree that says oh should i go grab that rocket launcher or should i avoid the player in front of me they'll just take that into account naturally you don't have to do anything which is pretty great and this is super helpful for just jumping in testing your mo your maps your modes without needing seven other players. Yeah, that's it's, right. a, it's like I said earlier, like being wow. able to just be in the zone, testing your map and go, hey, I just I want to play it. I don't have to get seven other people to come to my custom game. Mm -hmm. I just get the bots to come. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you get a full test pass on it. Yeah. That's real nice. It really like, in my experience, it's been really informative, like to do this in the blockout phase and really understand what your map is doing and because you can change the the, dif the difficulty of the bots in your custom game, right? Sure. And so yeah, you yeah. can really understand like how the map is playing and, and the bots will play geometry very well. It's kind of annoying sometimes how much they kill me. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, but also really, really helpful. I'm like, ah, that tower is really, really strong. Oh, okay, maybe that room. Yeah. You know what? Maybe, you know, maybe need some windows in that. I need some cover. Like, oh, I feel like this is just a hallway of death. Maybe I need a way out of it. Those kind of things. Yeah, for yep. sure. And that just means you're bringing a better map to custom games night when you go to play with your friends. So, that's very true. Yeah. Um, but I think that covers all the things we wanted to touch on today. Uh, before we wrap up, did you guys have any closing words you wanted to say? Um, I can't. I, I've sort of said this in other video in the other video, but. Yeah. Uh, 
I'm just super excited to see what like things like Action Sack, uh, how they evolve yep, yep. with with oh, nav mesh and oh. scripting, right? Like I just think it's going to be just exponentially more insane <laughs> yeah, than it was yeah, before. Yeah. And I I love Action Sack. I love Super Fiesta. I love all that stuff. So I'm super super jazzed <laughs> to see the crazy stuff that comes out of the community. Yeah. And uh, I'm kind of in the same boat. Like, surprise us. Uh, what can you come up with? Uh, what are you missing to come up with even cooler things? Like, we want to hear all of it. We're really, really excited to bring you along for this journey. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. And uh, everyone, thank you so much for watching another Forge video. We're going to have even more coming out on our Halo channels here in the coming weeks. So thank you so much. And stay tuned for more Forge info. We'll catch you next time.